So I've noticed this cheesecake factory a number of times during my travels around Doha. So here I am at the Mall of Qatar and I'm going to uh, try some cheesecake and some coffee and also talk to you about the BBC. So uh, let's go in. So I've been shown to my seat by this lovely lady here, sort of half in, half out. That's the interior of the Cheesecake Factory. I'm sitting just on the edge of the spillover area, um, just off the, uh, the main arena here at the Mall of Qatar. And I understand, looking at the menu, that this Cheesecake Factory actually does a lot more than just cheesecakes. In fact, it's a load of drinks, snacks, sort of fast food type macaroni cheese, salads, pizzas, lunch specials, pasta, glam burgers, what are these things? Old fashioned burger, stuffed cheddar burger, oh, there's a whole load of burgers. And of course, um, cheesecake. Actually, there's still more by way of proper food. Specialities, coconut lime chicken, Cajun chicken, Italian chickens, pasta speciality, seafood specialities, steak, well there you are, there's a lot more going on than I believed and then it looks like they're finally getting onto the cake. Oh no, they're not. So we've still got salads. This menu seems to just go on and on and on. And I'm not seeing any sign of cheesecake yet. Sandwiches, eggs and omelets, breakfast, ah, cheesecakes. So there you go. Original cheesecakes. Pineapple upside down cheesecake, peanut butter cinnamon cheesecake, caramel cheesecake, chocolate mousse cheesecake. It's just a whole load of cheesecakes. I suppose it is what it says on the chin is a cheesecake factory. Coconut cream pie cheesecake. Wow. Some of this stuff is going to add several stones to the waistline. But seeing as it's a treat, let's uh, let's go for something. Let's go for something interesting that I wouldn't otherwise normally try. Um, oh, very, very, I'm very feeling sickly already. Um, How are you, sir? Definitely not having Hershey's chocolate bar cheesecake. That's the sweetest thing. Key lime cheesecake. Now that could be interesting. So let's have a look at that. So key lime pie in a cheesecake. Deliciously tart and creamy on a vanilla crumb crust. Yeah, that sounds good. That will go down well with a, with a nice cup of coffee. So that's what we'll do. And they've got something called Skin Delicious Cheesecake Factory. What is that about? It's just a... Another menu for skinny people, I'm assuming. Or the illusion of less fat or less sugar. That's what these fancy branding stuff tends to be. But anyway, there we are, that's the menu sorted out. So I'm going to order and then let's talk about the BBC. So my cheesecake is here, my Americano is here. I feel so sleep deprived, I haven't had a proper night's sleep over the last 12, 10, 12 days. So this uh, coffee is uh, hopefully going to keep me awake. So let's talk about the BBC because as we were watching, getting ready to watch the, the final between Argentina and France last night at the Lucille Stadium, I understand later on from various news and friends and social media and Twitter and WhatsApp messages that the BBC has once again 
had once again decided that they would not cover the closing ceremony. They failed to cover the opening ceremony. Instead, we had Gary Lineker lecture us about rights and migrants and women and LGBT and everything else far beyond this station. Not what he's been employed to do on one and a half million pounds salary from a licensed payer. Um, but that yesterday they didn't cover the closing ceremony. Luckily it was covered by ITV. Um, although the BBC apparently said that it would be available on, on iPlayer and on online. But the BBC over the last few years, and going back a few years, you know, the BBC was synonymous with everything that you uh, think about when you think about the UK, Great Britain. It used to be a reliable news source. What it's turned into of late is basically some very questionable news and news sources, their current affairs. There's nothing, you know, Question Time, for example, used to be a flagship program, has just turned into a war fest. Um, and the license fee is constantly going up and up, and I believe, from, if I recall from my direct debits, I'm paying about £17 a month. Um, and frankly, I don't even watch TV anymore. Most of what I watch when I can and when I have time is, is online, on the phone, um, on the laptop. And I haven't watched TV for ages. I watched the first two weeks of the, the World Cup. And that was that those matches were shared between the BBC and ITV. But the problem is that with BBC journalists and presenters of late, they're all on social media. They all have their social media platforms and they do their day job, or they're supposed to, and none of them doing it properly. And then they go on social media and they sort of get involved in various spats with with people and then that line between you know their day job and their private life you know is, is very very blurred you know they're they're sort of trans get pressing into areas that they, they shouldn't do their impartial impartiality has been questioned a lot of presenters impartiality has been questioned um, recently and it, it's, it's getting to the point where the BBC is no longer a reliable news source. It's peddling a lot of, you know, fake news and half truths about stuff. And Gary has typified that with his monologue at the uh, opening ceremony, which the BBC refused to show because they wanted to make a point about migrants' rights and LGBT and women and whatnot. You know, without providing a platform for somebody else to counter you know that I understand Rio Ferdinand who was originally booked for that particular segment uh, was then cancelled and somebody else brought in because Rio was it got leaked that Rio was going to uh, counter some of those claims by Gary but Gary Lineker isn't employed by the taxpayer at a million and a half pounds a year to lecture us on anything frankly and the BBC failed to do his job, and it failed to do his job yesterday, as I understand, not showing the uh, closing ceremony on the main channel. They showed the game. Apparently, he wanted to just focus on the game. If you want to just focus on the game, just shut up and just focus on the game. Don't start getting into subjects that, that you don't understand, Gary. I know you want to. And this is the thing about, you know, he, he, he's very, very vocal, very active on social media, on Twitter especially, and he, and he, and he gets into all sorts of arguments and debates with people most often he loses and then he blocks people um, but this 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 world world cup this showpiece event in Qatar you know all the lies that were told leading up to it the last 10 years we've heard it time and again and what he did rather than have a constructive discussion and maybe have a debate it just lectured us lectured us about um, you know why it shouldn't be happening there if, you, if it shouldn't have been happening there Gary you should have done all of that rather than coming out to Qatar should have stayed in London and did the program from there because it's not difficult is it you know you're in, in, you're in front of a screen in a studio you could have done that from any you could have done it from your house from your home you didn't you came out to Qatar you stayed in one of the most plush um, hotel residential complexes um, which were also by the way built by the uh, 
many of the migrants who built the rest of Qatar and, and the football infrastructure. So I'm really getting fed up now of the BBC lecturing us, BBC's impartiality, their presenter's impartiality is being questioned and their inability to uh, present fact and factual information and instead chasing after um, headlines and, and, and you know stories that are going to get clicks or, or, or followers or subscribers or whatever. And it's high time. I, I, I wasn't... You know, this, this talk been going on, there's a very vocal uh, people out there who are suggesting that the, the BBC needs to reform it and we need to look at what the, the licence fee does and what value it brings and whether or not it brings any more value because with all the different streaming services, online services, social media, you know, all the different ways you can get news and information and, 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 and subscription channels and whatnot, has the BBC run its course? And I'm more and more, as, as, I, as I see, especially the last straw for me was this, the, the, the opening ceremony and the debacle that went along with that. And of course, hearing that they did the same last night with the closing ceremony. I'm of the view now that we seriously need to look at the BBC and the license fee. And in the meantime, um, you know, I think that a pause um, on the license fee uh, would not be a bad thing. You know, making a stand and saying, Do you know what, you're not doing what you're supposed to, you're not the world's biggest sporting event, the world's biggest showpiece sporting event, the Football World Cup opening closing ceremonies, they're part and parcel of the game, the whole occasion. And yet the BBC decided to lecture us on both occasions without justifying why they've taken this stance. So I'm of the view and I'm now going to be supporting the movement that is calling for reform of the BBC and the cancellation of the uh, the license fee and revisiting exactly what purpose the BBC serves us as a news outlet and whether it is actually serving any purpose at all or whether we actually need it in the current guise and um, whether it needs to be and certainly those uh, presenters on half a million three quarters of a million million pound million and a half like Gary whether you know how that those salaries are justified and what it is that we get for our money. As taxpayers, we have every right to question that, and I think it's time that we did. Unlike other World Cups, this time round, I don't believe we had the sort of roving reporters. We've had, we haven't had programs made, documentaries made about the local culture, the history, customs. You know, there's so much that have been missed out. So much people have missed out. Only those who are fortunate enough to come out, you know, look beyond the nonsense and the rubbish and the lies that were peddled by our media throughout the West, they would have seen what a rich, vibrant, colourful country Qatar is, how hospitable the people are, and where there's so much to see and do and appreciate. We didn't get any of that. We didn't get the side stories. We didn't get the back stories. We didn't get the, 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 the sort of insights. None of this stuff happened this time round. And it all comes down to an agenda from the BBC and its presenters that they were going to vilify uh, Qatar. They're going to use a massive stick that they've never used on anybody else before uh, to try and somehow present the moral high ground. But all they've managed to do is show their double standards, show uh, hypocrisy and uh, you know their, their virtue signaling has been well and truly noted and called out for luckily by people in social media and people who have been out here and people who have seen for themselves exactly what this World Cup has been like. You know, there's been so many great stories, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch. There's so much great work that's been done. People from 75, 80 different countries volunteering here, working here, making this wonderful event happen and turn it into the, 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 the greatest World Cup success. A World Cup where they'll struggle, they'll struggle to find any uh, 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 you know, crime, unruly behaviour, uh, you know, anything negative other than what they concocted or what they fabricated and what they've decided they were going to focus on without a proper uh, examination of the facts. This has been a terrible, terrible advert by the BBC and the world has woken up to our media and the way it's behaved and it has been discredited 
and I think I don't think the BBC will recover from this, and neither will the presenters. You know, we're hearing lots of nonsense now about um, how the the robe that was presented to Messi by the uh, by by the um, at the presentation as a gift, as a sign of honour, as a sign of respect. Uh, you know, it's suddenly the BBC is taken on, on the view that, oh, well, look, you know, his, his Argentinian jersey was covered up at a time, the, the biggest moment of his career. Actually, it was there for about five minutes and then he took it off and he celebrated without it for the rest of the, the night when the celebrations happened. He didn't have it on when he was on the bus. He didn't have it on while he was being uh, uh, carried on people's shoulders around the pitch. None of that. But what did they? What did the BBC decide to do? They focus on that five minutes when he was gifted something. And we've seen again double standards here at play. We've seen in other tournaments where the winners, people like Pele at Mexico um, in 1970, I think, he was made to wear the sombrero. You know, paraded in that. Other footballers have been given robes, these Arabian robes, as a mark of respect. Um, you know, many, many times, and nobody's batted an eyelid. You know, princes, kings, our own prince, uh, King Charles, has been given one. He wore one. This, this agenda is just the, the hypocrisy is breathtaking, and the double standards is just so tiring. But it's what we come to expect from the BBC now, a proper discredited organisation. Now, you know, it can't be relied upon for uh, honest news. Uh, it, it's borderline fake news and all the virtue signalling by their presenters are frankly nauseating earning half a million pounds to lecture us on things when they should be doing what they're basically employed to do which is read the news present a program and uh frankly if we want to be lectured we'll uh we, we, we'll go somewhere where we, we, we get a get a proper view and, a, and, and an opportunity to debate and discuss rather than listen to overpaid overhyped um, has beens like Gary Lineker. So here's a message to you, Gary. You know, your days are numbered. You've earned a good uh, shed load of money on the, from the taxpayer. You've got to the age now where, frankly, you know, you're making less and less sense. And if you want to be a social warrior out there, go out there and do it at somebody else's expense. But as a taxpayer, I'm afraid the answer is no. So that's it really, a short um, take on the BBC's decision not to show the closing ceremony again. I'm going to tuck into this cheesecake and coffee and I'll see you again soon from another place with another video about the goings on during and after this World Cup here in Qatar and my take on uh, some of these issues.